Hurricanes 9 and 1 playing for a certain bowl berth in the Orange Bowl a school record victory total and an outside chance at a national championship the Florida State Seminoles 6 and 3 playing tonight to stay in the picture for a good bowl never in history has the University of Miami had so much riding on a single football game we are thrilled to be bringing it to you live here on South Florida 7 and we will be back to continue our coverage right after this timeout Bring out your best. I wasn't drafted till the seventh round. They don't even know my name. The best. Croder, huh? It has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. There's a lot more to look at on our lowest price truck than just the price. Because our Mazda B2000 Sundowner comes loaded. You get a five-speed, radials, swing outside vent windows, and full carpeting, all standard. And at just $57.95, it's the lowest price truck in America with all those standard features. See your local Mazda dealer today in Homestead and Miami. Working at a sure and steady pace almost always produces results. The problem is, it doesn't get you much attention. So even though Hewlett-Packard technology has produced a number of firsts, some of you still don't know who we are. Maybe now you will. Introducing the touchscreen personal computer, the Hewlett-Packard 150, by merely touching the screen. You can find an address, move a paragraph, change a forecast, make a chart. No complicated commands to remember. No mouse, just your finger. In other words, you already know how to use the touchscreen personal computer. Which means nothing stands between you and what you can become. Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, setting you free. A capacity crowd already on its feet and roaring here at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee on a gorgeous night for football. Dave Willingham here to do the game for you along with former Dolphin Dick Anderson. Let's take a look at a couple of matchups in the line that will be a big factor in this ball game tonight. First of all, third string nose guard for Miami, Darren McMurray against an experienced Florida State Center, Tom McCormick. McCormick is a two-time honorable mention All-American. McMurray, of course, uh, third team until tonight. The rest of the defensive line must give him a lot of help. The challenge for the Miami offensive line, number 76, Alfonso Carriker, the defensive tackle. Alfonso is big and fast. They say a sure first-round draft choice. The Hurricanes on the side of the line must stop him. Quarterback Bernie Kosar, of course, a little bit hampered by an ankle. We're told it's okay, but it's important that he not be hit tonight. Pre-game pageantry unfolding down on the field. Let's capture the excitement and color with Andy Lascano on the sidelines. Dave, there is electricity down here in this crowd of more than 58,000. We have just had the coin toss at midfield, and we are about to signal the beginning of the game Florida State style. Their renegade program with Chief Osceola on board Flaming spear in hand will go to the middle of the field. In the middle, in the se with the Seminole head, he will plant the spear. Balloons will go up everywhere, and it's just a great, great exhibition. Watch this. Okay, Andy, thank you very much. What a spectacle. Let's just enjoy this together, fans, for a couple of seconds. A great night, Dave. Thousands of balloons going up in the air. Yellow and red balloons. Full house. People are excited. A beautiful, cool night for football. Everybody's ready. It has been an incredibly beautiful day here in Tallahassee. Temperatures tonight during the ball game expected to drop into the mid-40s. 
It will be cool. There is very little wind, as you can tell by the balloons just floating straight up in a gorgeous spectacle from Doak Campbell Stadium. The crowd is excited. The teams are excited. The coaches along the sideline are excited. We want you to sit back and enjoy football action at its finest college style here on South Florida 7. We may beat it to death before the night's over, Dave, but uh, this game is vitally important to both teams. The Hurricanes, with a win, are almost assured of an Orange Bowl berth. Florida State, if they win it, they're going to get to a uh, much better bowl. So both teams must win. Barry Barco, number seven, the freshman, set to kick it off for Florida State. Reggie Sutton, number one, averaging 23 yards per kickoff return, standing two yards deep in his own end zone to receive the kick. Here comes Barco. We are underway from Duke Campbell Stadium. Kickoff going to one of the up men. That is Darrell Oliver. He has some room. He is over the 35. He is not stopped until he gets to the 39-yard line. Darrell Oliver returning the kickoff from Barco, setting Miami up in good field position for its opening attempt at the offense tonight. Your starting backs for the University of Miami, freshman quarterback Bernie Kosar, leading rusher Albert Bentley, and Keith Griffin in the backfield. The wide receivers, Eddie Brown and dependable Stanley Shakespeare. The line, Berticelli, Comandiero, Sinclair, Ward, Heffernan, and the dependable tight end, Glenn Dennison, the school record holder. We're all set for the first play from scrimmage for the University of Miami and Florida State. Kosar on the screen. Glenn Dennison, his favorite target, has the ball. He is across midfield. He has raced out of bounds at the Florida State 45-yard line. A lot of crisp hitting out there, Dave. Great blocking by the Hurricane offensive line. It was a delay screen to the tight end. You can see Dennison on the near side of your screen, sitting back there, drifting back. Kosar did a great job with that screen, flips it over to him, and Dennison does a good job getting outside where there's a little bit of room up across the 50-yard line. First and 10 Hurricanes at the 45. Albert Bentley spinning around the left. He is down inside the 40. A gain of about five for Bentley, the Hurricanes' leading rusher. The Florida State defensive line, Carriker, Alfonso Carriker, their big defensive player. Stroud and Williams, the other defensive linemen. Williams and Taylor, the linebackers, along with McLean and Rowe. Riley, Bloodworth, Milligan, and McCrary, the secondary people. It's second and just inside five yards to go for the Hurricanes. The ball at the Seminole 40-yard line. Quick drop, Kosar. Eddie Brown has the ball. Eddie Brown near the 20, deep in Florida State territory. And the Hurricanes bite off yardage in large chunks on their first possession tonight. That's another first down. They spot the ball just outside the Seminole 20. Eddie Brown with a great reception. The problem with the Seminoles thus far this year, particularly early in the season, a lot of points scored on them. Their defense is not nearly as strong as their offense is, Dave. Their offense ranked fourth in the country. Their defense not ranked. First and 10 Hurricanes. We'll call it the 21 of Florida State. Griffin has this screen pass. Griffin is inside the 20, and then he is forced out of bounds. Number 86 on the tackle for Florida State is John McClain, the outside linebacker. When you see two screens that early in a game, Dave, you know that the Hurricane offensive coaches are, are have seen something during the week. It's a tremendous rush that uh, they're expecting from the Seminole front four. Sucks him in, and they're able to toss a little screen pass off to the side. It went for a gain of only a yard, second and nine at the 19. First out of the air again. In and out of the hands of Albert Bentley. And Bentley in the grasp, meanwhile, of McLean again. Just able to break it up. It'll bring up a third down and long situation. Bentley was bumped a little bit by McLean when he went out there, but he, he still should have caught the pass. Third and nine, just underway. Critical game. Enjoy it with us all evening, right through the Hurricanes' 
Welcome back home in Miami after midnight. Kosar, plenty of time. A flag goes down as the pass is caught by Shakespeare in the corner of the end zone. You can, you can see Kosar favoring that ankle as he walks off the field. A decision being made by the officials on the fate of that pass over in the corner of the end zone. It was caught by Stanley Shakespeare. Flags immediately went in. It's certainly not a good sign for the Hurricane offense. Kosar limping badly early in the game. He must have hurt it again on that last pass play. He had to dance around a lot waiting for a receiver to come open. Offensive line did a very good job of keeping the pressure off of him. Pass interference against Florida State. First down on the one. Looks like they shoved him out right when he was going up for the ball. Here are the game officials for tonight. Referee Paul Schmidt, the linesman Joe Pipkin, Ray, Rose, Lang, and Waits, your other members of the officiating crew. And that last Hurricanes play. after the pass interference. First and goal at the one. In the last play, tremendous blocking by the Miami offensive line. Kosar had 20 yards if he could have run had his ankle been all right, Dave, but he chose to throw it instead. Kosar almost never will run with the football. He hands it off to Bentley, who will try to run with it. Bentley scores! Tough running by Albert Bentley. He's been getting the job done all year long for the Hurricanes. Albert Bentley, who came into this ball game as Miami's leading rusher with 698 yards on 133 carries, has put the Hurricanes out front by a score of 6 to nothing. The Hurricanes take the ball, drive it down on their first possession with the aid of the interference penalty, get the opening score. An important factor in a ball game of this magnitude. Jeff Davis on to attempt the point after Rick Tootin will hold. Davis had his long string of points after broken last week with a block. Flag goes down as the kick goes up. The kick is good. And Miami leads it by a score of seven to nothing. As we say, flags are down. We'll dispense with that. They're talking to Rick Tootin, the holder, and it appears as though the point after will stand. Miami leads seven to nothing with 13:03 remaining in the first period. We'll be back to Doak Campbell Stadium after this. Everyone has a dream. For some, it's wealth. For others, it's escape to the South Seas. For Ed Williamson of Williamson Cadillac, the dream is that one day everyone will drive a new Cadillac. And he's willing to do whatever it takes to make that dream Thank come you. true. They were going to buy a Ford. Thank goodness they got here in time. Williamson Cadillac, across from Dadeland. It takes super effort and talent to develop a number one team, and that's what we're striving for here. And that's precisely what's been done by the Norton Tire Company. They've combined experience and reliability with proven products like world-famous Michelin X radial tires to give South Florida drivers a quality tire. They're coming at you right now with affordable low prices on all Michelin radials. Norton Tire Company, number one to thousands of South Floridians. The Hurricanes out to a 7-0 lead over the Seminoles. Jeff Davis will kick off from the 45-yard line following the penalty on the point after touchdown. Deep receiver number 20, Roosevelt Snipes, a reserve tailback, a sophomore from Sarasota. Let's see if he kicks it over his head, Dave, or uh, away from him. This man's dangerous, and we'll hear about him all night long. Davis has done a good job of kicking unplayable kicks, but Snipes is going to bring this one out. And he is going to pay for it. He is knocked down at around the five-yard line. And let's see if we can pick up the man making the hit. It looked like Willie Lee Broughton, who will play some at nose guard tonight in a reserve row, putting Florida State back deep in its own territory. They're going to spot that ball at the six-yard line. Snipes probably should not have brought that one up. Davis kicked a very good kick. It was high. It was five yards deep in the end zone. And the Hurricanes are ready for this football game. There are a lot tougher than they were last week. Bob Davis, Allen and Jones in the backfield, Ouija Thompson, Jesse Hester, the wide receivers. Ayanada, Render, McCormick, Dukes, Hart, and Wheeler across the front line as the Seminoles go to the offense for the first time tonight. Deep handoff. It's 
going to Snipes. And Snipes is upended on a good play at the seven yard line by number 89 for Miami. That is Julio Cortez, number 99, making the stop. And correction on the ball carrier, Greg, Cal Greg Allen making the carrier. Brown, Fagan, McMurray, and Robinson across the front line for the Hurricanes. Brophy and Sisk, the dependable linebackers. A cohesive secondary of Bellinger, Sutton, Calhoun, and Williams. Greg Allen on that last carry got just a couple. Second down and eight yards to go for the Seminoles. That is Allen again on the delay. He is over the 15-yard line. Kenny Calhoun, Kenny Sisk, the stoppers for Miami. As we said earlier, you have the number two defense in the country against the number four offense. The key to any great football game is how well your defense plays. As we used to say, if they don't score, you can't lose. Do Greg Allen, number 26, the all-everything tailback for Florida State, needs only 12 yards coming into the ball game to crack the 1,000-yard barrier and be the third Seminole back in history to do that. He has run the ball twice for nearly 10, so the next time he touches it, he is likely to go over that 1,000-yard barrier. His last carry just short of a first down out over the 15. It'll be third and very short for the Seminoles. The key to the Hurricane defense, of course, is stopping the two great runners that Florida State has. The defensive linemen, linebackers, must stay at home. They have to keep their responsibilities. Florida State is not known as a, as a passing team. And, of course, their starting quarterback, Kelly Lowry, is out. They have Mr. Bob Davis in the game. Davis, number 10, just plunges ahead behind those big offensive linemen. He has the first down. He has the first down, Dave, and they are big. Let us drop down to the sidelines. Andrew Liscano. David, real quickly, in talking to the Seminole offensive players earlier in the week, they all had the utmost respect for Miami's defense. Every one of them said that Miami was solid at all 11 positions. That's kind of interesting. Back to you. There is the Miami scoring drive. 62 yards on six plays, just under two minutes elapsed. Albert Bentley capped it with a one-yard scoring punch. First and ten Seminoles here at the 18. Allen once again, he is hemmed in, squeezes out of a couple of tackles, and just gets past the line of scrimmage. Far across out of your picture, a flag goes in. Kenny Sisk on the stop for Miami. Kenny Sisk came by and hit him in the back. Here we have a ISO on Sisk from all the way across the field. As Allen is jumping around, Sisk hits him very hard in the back. That's a surprise. From Florida State. And the clip being signaled against Florida State. We'll see how they dispense with it. Referees taking their time and being careful about the calls in this important ball game. Miami has accepted and it will be marched off. The ball was spotted just short of the 20 yard line. They'll move it back just short of the 10. You hear Paul Schmidt, the referee, announcing the clipping penalty against Florida State. It'll be second and 20 coming up for the Seminoles inside their 10 yard line. Davis with a deep drop, shooting his first pass out there, and Allen cannot hang on at the 17 yard line. Kenny Calhoun was over, ready to make the defensive play for the Hurricanes. The Seminoles have cut down the amount of passing they do since Lowry was hurt in the Arizona State game a couple of weeks ago. He has a bad knee, is not expected to see action tonight, Kelly Lowry, the senior quarterback. There has been some talk that he could come on in an inspirational role at some time during the ball game if the Seminoles need him. That's hard to do, Dave, if you truly are hurt. If he's not starting tonight, then he truly is hurt. And Davis, although he did a great job against Arizona coming off the bench, uh, is not quite as good a passer. Third and long, they send Allen again. He is not near the first down. He crosses the 15. He's knocked down there by Reggie Sutton. And it will bring up a putting situation. Here we have Jones, the receiver, coming down to make a block, even though he didn't come down. 
He gets in his way, keeps it, keeps uh, fighting Miami with man from getting inside. Fighting with Danny Brown was Hassan Jones. Here's the punt coming out, and it is a good punt by the freshman. It is driving Danny Brown, Eddie Brown back, I should say, inside the 25-yard line. And Brown is going to be put down at about the 30. Two freshman punters, and this one has a 40 one average and we'll be back in a moment you gotta reach deep inside we always run faster together maybe it's the baton maybe it's the way we push each other Best has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. A 51-yard punt by FSU freshman Lewis Berry as the hurricane set up on the far hash mark. First and ten at their 30-yard line. A lot of Miami fans in the ballpark tonight. Well, they are wild and crazy. Most of them members of the Howling Hurricanes Super Fans or organization that is so vocal in the Orange Bowl on so many afternoons of football. Seven to nothing Hurricanes out in front. 10-34 remaining in the first period from Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. Hurricanes to the offense for their second possession. Stanley Shakespeare near side. Eddie Brown far side. Griffin sets up on a wing right. Kosar gives to Bentley and nothing doing there at all. David Ponder, defensive tackle, was right there to greet Albert Bentley and stop the play call. No hole there. We see the Miami line coming off the ball. But number 45 just uh, won't let it happen. He plugs up the middle. Quite a play, and Bentley cannot get away. Number 85, David Ponder, making the play, causing the no-gain situation for the Hurricanes. It will be second and ten. Same people in there. Backs in an eye behind Bernie Kosar, the remarkable freshman, passing at a 61% clip. Carriker is in there. Kosar having to scramble. He's in trouble. Gets out of it. And he is going to gain some yardage. Kosar working on that tender ankle. Scrambles out there for a gain of just over five yards. That's the best job of scrambling Mr. Kosar has done all season long. He was running to the first down. Isaac, Isaac Williams, one of the nickelbacks in there, finally made the stop on Kosar. Kosar's a tough young man with a lot of determination. He's going to make it happen. He brought it up there for a gain of six. They spotted at the 36. Shakespeare and Brown, still your wide receiver. Crowd alive. Screen, Bentley has it. Tough running by Albert Bentley. He is over the 40. He has the first down for the Hurricanes. Prince Matt, a linebacker in there to help with the stop for Florida State, along with number three, 23, Tracy Ashley. Again, that's the third screen we've seen tonight. They sucked in the defensive line. There's their All-American, but a little bit late. Bentley does a great job breaking inside, pulling away from would-be tacklers. He, get, he got the first down. Center Ian Sinclair, one of the blockers out there in front of that play for the Hurricanes. 43-yard line is where it's spotted. A mix-up in the pattern out there. Stanley Shakespeare came inside at the 40. Kosar threw the ball outside. Incompletion results. It will be second and 10. A definite mistake by Shakespeare. Kosar was throwing to a spot, and Shakespeare wasn't there. He kind of slipped when he came in. He might have made the, wanted to make the head fake and go outside, but he wasn't there, and they threw the play away. It has been an absolutely dry day here in Tallahassee. The footing down on the field, excellent. Could not be a better day or a better night to have a ball game. Four for six, Bernie, 44 yards thus far on the night. Second and ten here. He's got a man wide open. It's Eddie Brown inside the 40. Brown running laterally is near the 35-yard line. 
27 on the stop for Florida State is Randy White. That was a great play in that the Hurricanes sent one wide receiver deep. The Seminoles were in a zone defense. Brown comes up underneath the three backs. There wasn't anybody within 10 yards of him. And had he gotten outside this one man, it was clear sailing. Shakespeare couldn't get back to make the block. Play winds up at the 36-yard line in Seminole territory. Kosar appears to be calling an audible there. Pitch goes to Keith Griffin. Right side. Griffin running tough. He is inside the 30 on second effort. Let's kick it down to the field and into the sky. You know, Davey, folks were talking about Bernie Kosar and his ankle. I was just talking with some of the team doctors. They say there's nothing extraordinarily wrong with it. They don't have it taped any heavier than normal. It's just uh, it's amazing to them that it's acting up as early in the game as it is. David? Hurricanes are inside the Seminole 30 to 29. Second and short, second and just a couple. They keep those same personnel in there. Brown and Shakespeare, wide receivers. Again, Kosar appears to be calling an audible. Throwing on second and short. Incomplete. Almost broken up over there by Kenny Rowe, the big play linebacker for Florida State. A man who goes into each game with a sore shoulder, doesn't practice much in the week, just comes on and plays hard as long as he can. This live telecast is presented by authority of the University of Miami and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express consent of the University of Miami and WSBN. Third and just over two for the Hurricanes. close to Bernie Kosar. Bernie gets it away, has a man open, but the ball is going to be intercepted down near the goal line. He was trying to go to John Smetana in the end zone. The ball underthrown. And let's see if we can pick up who picked it off. A poorly thrown pass by Kosar. He had a lot of time back there. He's looking around. Everybody's covered. And he just threw it up to the end zone. Should have been intercepted. Wasn't a very smart pass by Kosar that time. Brian McRae junior free safety the intercepting party for Florida State the turnover gives the Seminoles the ball at their one yard line again they have to start deep in their territory but they have turned aside a second Miami attempt at scoring in this ball game Hurricanes sitting on a seven to nothing lead 655 remaining first period Bob Davis brings the Seminoles out Allen of course gets the pitch that is Roosevelt Snipes I beg your pardon and he is out over the five Bobby Bowden will alternate his tailbacks quite a bit. He will show you Allen, then he will show you Snipes, and we will show you some action in the offensive line. We talked earlier about uh, the All-American at center, and uh, we got him. Second and about four after the six-yard gain by Roosevelt Snipes. Remains in there. He gets the ball. Flags go down as he is met by Ken Sisk right at the line of scrimmage. Hurricanes doing a good job of gang tackling there. Willie Lee Broton also went on the play again. Flags are down outside your picture. Willie Lee is on is playing nose guard right now on the center. He's doing a good job getting his hands on top of the center and getting away from him as he made that tackle two plays ago. He and Darren McMurray will split the nose guard duty tonight. In the absence of the injured oh, Tony Fitzpatrick. Referee Schmidt indicating that the penalty is against the Seminoles. Florida State, they only had six men on the line. It's declined. Go down. <laughs> down to the field, here's Andy. With Glenn Dennison, what effect is this crowd having on the play calling out there? Can you guys hear Bernie? Well, it's, it's a little tough. He's going to have to start uh, calling his plays a little louder, but uh, I, I figure we get a couple more scores, and the, and the, quiet, and the crowd's going to quiet down. All right, Glenn, thanks a lot. Back upstairs. Third and a long three after the Hurricanes declined the penalty. It does seem like there's a lot of noise on the field. I noticed two times that the Hurricanes checked off, and we'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for a lot of car for the money, come see us. We're your Dave Broward Mazda dealers. 
And we've got the RX-7, best-selling two-seat sports car in America. We've got the GLC, one economy car that doesn't economize on performance. And we've got the 626, all new and Motor Trend's 1983 import car of the year. Looking for a lot of car for the money? Mazda! Get a lot of car for your money at your Mazda dealer in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and Pompano Beach. There's a reason why you'll find Publix Deli Platters at so many gatherings. They're the life of the party. Guests always seem to gather around deli platters of tasty meats, cheeses, sandwiches, and chicken. So whether you're having a company party or just having company, invite the life of the party. Order deli platters from the deli at Publix. Good food from the deli at Publix. For the good times. It is happy birthday time for Bobby Bowden, the Seminole head coach, born 54 years ago last Tuesday in Birmingham, Alabama. This is the oldest series of Florida State football. The Hurricanes lead it 14 to 12. Quarterback Barry in trouble, scrambling out of it. The ball may be loose. We have a big pile up down on the field, and the Miami kids are indicating they have it. We will watch as they unstack. They are indicating they have it, Dave, but I thought the quarterback was down when he dove forward. They are giving it to the Seminoles. Willie Lee Broughton, who's playing over the center at nose guard, is doing a good job. I thought he had the tackle, but the quarterback ducked right under his arm. He didn't get back to get low enough to get him. Barry scrambles, picks up the first down out at the 15-yard line. Jesse Hester into the ball game at a wide receiver spot for the Seminoles. 35 remaining in the first period at noisy Doe Campbell Stadium. Davis with a play fake. Intending for Hester overthrown. Almost into triple coverage with Bellinger, Calhoun, Eddie Williams, all in the area along with Reggie Sutton. Let's take a look at Jesse Hester. Hester is their dangerous receiver. He goes down deep. Uh, looks like he's going to take off, but he comes back for the curl. The Hurricane linebackers did a great job getting a deep drop. As you can see, six, Sisk there in front of you, dropping back for the pass. The quarterback had to throw it up over the top and threw it a little bit too high. Hester, a man whose speed is advertised at 4.44 yards for the 40-yard dash. Second and 10, seven holes, 15. Delay, snipes, nothing doing. He is gang tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Jay Brophy in on the stop. Kevin Fagan also there for the Hurricanes. They stop that little draw play absolutely cold. The Hurricane defense all night long has to have, they have to stay at home, do their job, plug the holes, because the Seminoles have two very dangerous running backs that can get away at any time. 89, Tom Wheeler coming into the ball game at tight end. Third down and long. Seminoles will put three wide receivers out there. They have only one remaining back. Davis flips it out. Wheeler is the man who catches it. He is going to be short of the first down at about the 23-yard line. Eddie Williams over there making the play for the Hurricanes. Just short of the first down. They sent the wide receivers deep. Brought in uh, 82 underneath the wide receivers, but he didn't quite get there for the first down. Punting time one more time for the Seminoles. Freshman kicker Lewis Berry, number six, onto the field. Barry has an interesting technique, Dave. He has kind of a weird one-step technique, but he kicks the ball very high and very long. A great freshman punter that's going to help this Seminole team for a long time. Almost got he is run into down there as he gets it away. Eddie Brown calling for a fair catch at the 39, but the Hurricanes got a piece of young Mr. Barry attempting to rush that punt. Flags are down. You see Barry clapping his hands. Potters will do. He did a pretty good acting job on that. Let's take a look at what he did on that play. That was a good acting job, and it's a questionable call because he might have been blocked into him as the up back hit him, but uh, the aggression on a play like that can really hurt the Hurricanes. They had a chance to get the ball on the 40, and now the Seminoles have a first down. I got running into the kicker against Miami. Ron Harris, reserve defensive end, number 57, was the man who was appeared to have been blocked into the kicker. Penalty has been called. It will give Florida State a first down at the 29-yard line in their territory. Is there a difference between roughing the, the, the punter and, and getting pushed into it? Kelly Lowry, the senior quarterback that we've talked about, 
is up and moving around on the Florida State sidelines. Meanwhile, out on the field, first and ten. Barry, option play, coming this side. The pitch going out there to Snipes, and he had a hard time with that one right along the 30-yard line. And, there's a, and a flag, flag goes flag down flag. far away from the ball on the other side of the field. Number 75, Herbert Harp, was trying to block a, a Miami player right at the end of the play as the referee was looking right at him. Harp throws an elbow at him. The referee ca calmly dropped his flag. That's going to be a uh, unnecessary roughness penalty against the Seminoles. Several penalties have interrupted play so far here this evening. And they are taking their time, as we said, discussing, making sure every call is right here. Here's referee Schmidt. All right, I have a dead ball, personal foul against Miami. So the call goes against the University of Miami Hurricanes, and it is going to be a big one. That's hard to believe, Dave. Threw an elbow at him. Maybe the Miami player who was Kevin Fagan reacted to the action, and very often it's the second party in a seminar in a situation like that that will get caught and get flagged. The long penalty takes the ball out over the 45. Now the referee picking it up, and he's going to go back with it. Let us make up our mind. Dead ball foul against Miami. Dead ball. Dead ball foul against Florida State. The penalties in the order of the occurrence. First down, 25. I wasn't all wrong, Dave. He did throw an elbow at him. Bobby Bowden with the winningest record in Florida State football history at 65 and 25. We'll have a replay of that last down when all of this marching the football up and down the hash marks is finished here. Those kind of penalties against either team are very dangerous. You stop a drive. Uh, They've had a couple penalties here. Both teams need to get back in line and start playing football. Of course, a penalty set up Miami touchdown, the interference call on Florida State in the end zone. But it was a dead ball penalty, and we see a first and 25. Now that will certainly help the Hurricane defense. And the penalties were marked off against each team in the order of preference. So the first penalty was Miami and the second penalty against Florida State. So they move the ball down the field. That's 10 yards and a first down. The second order was Florida State. They move the ball back 15. Hence, it's first and 25. You have to be a math major to be a referee in college football. You can put the calculator away now, Richard. It's first and 25 at the Florida State 30-yard line. The figures on the scoreboard are easy to read. Miami has seven points. Florida State doesn't have any. Three minutes, 45 seconds remaining to play in the first period at Doe Campbell Stadium. You can hear the fans chanting FSU. They're expecting a crowd that possibly will break the record here at Doe Campbell Stadium, which is 57,000 and change. Technically, the stadium holds only 57,000. I think they may have more than that tonight. Back to the action we go. That is Snipes with the football. He is up near the 35-yard line. Fred Robinson in on the stop, among others, for Miami. Also there, Jay Brophy. Kenny Sisk also in the area. Somewhat surprising that we're seeing so much of Snipes in the ball game. And Allen hasn't played since that first uh, series. I don't know if his knee is bothering him a little bit, but uh, the people in Tallahassee are extremely high on Snipes. They say at the end of his career, he could be better than Allen. Second and about 21 from the 34-yard line, Seminole territory. Play fake by Davis, looking for the screen. Miami has it covered up pretty well. And it is going to fall incomplete. Alert play by the Miami defense. Ball intended for Snipes. Moving up to put the hit on there was number 99, Julio Cortez, from his defensive end position. The Hurricane defense had that little screen play infiltrated and figured out pretty well. They were not fooled by that one. Both 99, Cortez, as well as Kevin Fagan were right in there. You can see them go in, start to rush the passer, realize they've got no pressure on them. They hold and read. They did a good job of diagnosing that play. Third and long. Third and about 22 for the Seminoles. 34-yard line in their territory. 
Davis looking down the middle has a man there Hassan Jones inside the 50 Jones gets away from one man he is going to be stopped just short of the first down Kenny Calhoun made the saving tackle on Hassan Jones and let's watch the route that he runs and the way that that play was executed by the Seminoles Seminoles had plenty of time to throw the ball again a deep crossing pattern he wanted to get down to the first down yardage Bob Davis throws it right on the money and Jones Hassan almost gets away Kenny Calhoun comes up Bulldogs him to the ground and the Seminoles are going to punt it away. They're not going to go for the first down. Calhoun, a short tackler, and he saved a first down conversion by the Seminoles there. Lewis Berry on to punt the ball away. Berry pops it right straight down. Brown calling for a fair catch at the three-yard line. Down. That's a cardinal rule for a punt returner. You, st you stand on the ten-yard line. You don't let the ball go. In a moment, we'll be back. Core Aviation. Support from the air for Marines on the ground. We fly some of the world's most sophisticated jets, tactical planes, all types of helicopters, even transport and refueling planes. More than one third of our jobs give technical skills and training in aviation. And as a Marine pilot, we offer you a challenge you won't find anywhere else. Check us out. Maybe you can be one of us. The few, the proud, the Marines. 49-year-old University of Miami coach Howard Schnellenberger, 1981 coach of the year. Many are saying that he is in consideration for another such honor here in 1983. I think if he win, if the Hurricanes win tonight, you may just very well may see Howard Schnellenberger be the coach of the year again. His team is pinned deep in its own territory. You can see the ball resting down there just outside the two-yard line in Miami territory after Eddie Brown caught that 41-yard punt from Lewis Berry inside the Miami five. There's a lot of noise down in the field. The, her, the Seminole players are, are getting the fans geared up. Gosar is having a hard time here barking out the signals and getting the automatics out. Alonzo Highsmith in the ball game at a running back, the freshman for the Hurricane. Gosar into his own end zone. Shoots the ball out there, has a man wide open. Stanley Shakespeare can't make the catch at the 42. Shakespeare all alone had to come back on that ball a little bit and just couldn't hang on. That takes a lot of guts to throw the ball out of your end zone on the three-yard line, but Shakespeare had him beat by five yards and looked back. I don't know if uh, the defender's arm got in the way, but Shakespeare just did not look the ball in and catch it. Hurricane offensive line doing a superior job of keeping the pass rush off Bernie Kosar and letting him get away that play. Second down and ten. Bentley and Highsmith in the backfield. Crowd on its feet and roaring. Kosar trying to call an automatic. Highsmith pecking along the line of scrimmage. He's out to the five. The hometown crowd certainly is advantageous when they make that much noise when you're trying to call signals. It really helps the uh, defense on the field. He got three yards. It'll be third and seven for the Hurricanes. John McClain made the stop for the Seminoles. FSU adjusting the defense. Extra defensive backs going in. A minute 13 to play. First period. Bosar is going to throw it. Has Brown wide open, and this pass is far overthrown. And he did have Brown wide open, and Kosarth really threw a poor pass. Four yards over the head of the receiver. Defensive back Brian McCrary back there to cover. It is going to set up Rick Tootin with an extremely difficult putting situation. He will be standing near the end line. Hassan Jones back to receive for Florida State. He is standing at about the 45. Rick Tootin with an average of about 39 yards, 39.2 to be exact, coming into this ball game. Freshman putter for the Hurricane. Ten men along the line for Florida State. They're in on it. They block it. It is blocked. And the official signals safety for Florida State. 
Look, look like we'll take another look, see if we can pick out who blocked that punt by Rick Tootin. Ten man rush by Florida State. A whole bunch of people. Number 85 came in. Defensive tackle David Ponder, the man who blocked that kick. Hurricanes lead 7 to 2. We'll be back. You get that old special feeling during old special feeling feeling days. It's old special feeling dealing days. The Sunshine Olds Network. Your Florida and South Georgia Olds dealers are dealing on Cutlass Supreme, dealing on Delta 88, dealing on Cutlass Sierra, and the full line of 84 Oldsmobiles. Old special feeling dealing days now through November 30th. You get a special deal on an Oldsmobile. From the Sunshine Olds Network, we're dealing. Presenting a Sanyo video recorder with special effects beyond the ordinary. Effects like slow motion and freeze frame, but with all the clarity and none of the usual interference. The Sanyo VCR with our clear forehead design. Clear special effects at a clearly affordable price. Sanyo's clear forehead design. Now the choice is perfectly clear. Sanyo, the official video products of the 1984 Olympics. Free kick following the safety. Rick Tootin will punt it out of there. Roosevelt snipes. Number 20 deep to receive for Florida State. Tootin gets it high. Snipes inside the 25. He's over the 45. He is to the 47-yard line. Ken Sisson. Along with number 28 for Miami. Willie Martinez. In on the stop. The Seminoles will have... Pretty good field position at the 47-yard line. A 33-yard punt. On the uh, free kick after the safety by Rick Tootin. Roosevelt Snipes was, as I said, among the top three in the junior college 100-meter dash finals last year. He can fly. Allen is in there now, along with Jones. Davis to throw. Davis. Eddie Williams back there. Williams has it bounce off, bounce off his chest. Eddie Williams, the only person in position to make a play on that ball. The defensive back, the safety for Miami. Couldn't hang on at the 15-yard line. Williams does a great job as a free safety. His only problem is he's dropped three interceptions in the last four games. They need to work on his hands. You hate to see that, a defensive back dropping the ball when they throw it to you. I never saw number 40 for the old Dolphins drop any, did I, Richard? <laughs> Couldn't afford to. You can't. You don't get the ball that often. A defensive back has to make that play. Second and 10 for the Seminoles. Davis with split backs, getting some pressure. Gets the pass away. And it's ruled incomplete. The intended receiver, tight end Tom Wheeler, they say no catch at the 50-yard line. I think he caught it and hit it once, it bounced up in the air, and it landed on his chest when he was, when he was on the ground. I don't think that ball hit the ground. ground Dave. The Ibis disagrees with you. He says no catch. And his word is final. All right. Third and ten coming up for the Seminoles. Jesse Hester into the ball game, replacing Ouija Thompson. Bobby Bowden rotating his wide receivers in there, bringing the plays. Hester splits to the far side. looking for one receiver. He had Hester down there inside the 35 and he couldn't hang on. Miami back there to obscure his vision just a little bit. Let's take a look at what Hester did on that play that did not result in a completion. The difference is Bob Davis had a lot of time to throw. Hester is running a deep crossing pattern. Look at that drop Calhoun has. He's down the deep middle. The linebackers, as you can see, 41 and 92 for the Hurricanes. They got excellent drops and the ball was was thrown late. There he began to kick. Not a good punt. Low. Eddie Brown takes it at the 13. He's around the corner. He is over the 25. He is not going to be stopped until he is rolled out of bounds outside the Miami 30 yard line at about the 32. Eddie Brown with a good punt return for the Hurricanes to give them some decent field position as they go back to the offense. And that's the first time he was able to turn the corner. Got a great block out on the side. I didn't see who made the block, but he got two Seminoles as he turned, turned the corner and started upfield. Very important to catch the ball first and then run with them. They mark it at the 31-yard line. 17 seconds, as you can see, remaining in the first period of play. That's Danny Brown, who has a chronic sore knee, getting some tape on the sidelines. 
and putting his brace back on. Hurricanes first and ten at their 31 yard line. David Kentai in the ball game. Wide receivers flip to the near side out of your picture. Griffin with the ball running play out over the 35 yard line with Griffin on the right side tough runner Griffin for his size he's not very tall that enables him sometimes to get under the big defensive lineman but he runs with a lot of heart the brother of double Heisman Archie Griffin it's the end of the first period the Hurricanes lead it by a score of seven to two and we'll be back